What's up, Simonix? Welcome back to a new vlog episode and welcome to my personal coding timeline. Over the last time I saw some old videos about coding and I tried to remember how I got started and when I got started and actually that wasn't easy to figure out. So today I would like to show you my personal coding timeline and also especially a request. I would love to see your coding timeline as well. So leave a comment below this video uh, before or after watching it and just let me know uh, 2015 learned this, 2016 got into this. I would really love to see your personal timelines in the comments below. So let's travel back in time now and see how Simon actually got started because Simon wasn't always like Simon is now. <laughs> Finding my first year of programming wasn't actually that easy. I think it is in uh, 2004, uh, but I'm not completely sure. But that's actually uh, like 15, 16 years ago already. I think I said this before, back then I got started because my brother was getting started with coding. He's uh, four years older than me. So I guess he had a bit more experience with everything he read. But I got started with um, basic C++ development and he also continued with direct X integration, but I think I never got that far. But with the C++, I was actually able to build my first command line games, which uh, took me quite some time. They are pretty trash. I still have the files on my computer to execute them. The problem is they are for Windows and that's a Mac and I don't even own any Windows machine right now. But yeah, that's actually how I got started. In the next year, in 2005, I got more into the web development part of things. So at that time I turned 16, I think. And I read a book about HTML and a bit of CSS and also additionally later got into PHP at that time. I also have the code for that. Uh, I've shown you some of the pages in the past. It's really like horrible. Uh, I thought I might be the next designer, but I was actually pretty bad at designing anything. So I just built up these giant images and then I sliced everything down. I maybe with Photoshop or anything like this and used them in Dreamweaver or uh, generated a table based on these. It was it was horrible uh, from the perspective of today. I created home pages. I somehow hosted them. I have no idea where I hosted them or how I actually transferred the, the, the files because I don't know if I had actually the skills to do this back then. But that got me a bit into the web development stuff. Later in 2008 uh, in school I actually started using Java. Uh, we used uh, a simple tool to move a little bug around the screen with commands and uh, since I already had a bit of skills from C++ and the web development skills, this was actually a kind of easy task, but I uh, learned a lot about general uh, algorithms, about... I actually don't know about which sorting we learned back then, but that kind of got me the foundation already in school. I think that was like grade 8 or 9. Uh, at that time. And in uh, 2009 I think we also got SQL the first time in school, so that was kind of my first interaction with databases, but uh, everything was still on a very low level. Then in 2010 I got to university and things started to change a bit. We still used Java in university and I still didn't really like it back then. Uh, we also used Haskell, uh, which was like, you know, these areas you intentionally leave out uh, for learning during an exam. So Haskell was exactly one of these. I thought, well, I'm not able to solve that uh, problem anyway in that time, so I will just not learn it in the first place. And of course we also used a lot of SQL in university to access databases. Um, I still have a bit of foundational experience with SQL uh, if I need to use it, but I still need to look up now almost everything. In 2011 was actually an interesting year because then I got started during my time in university with Objective-C. I bought my first Mac. I've been a Mac user or Apple user since then and we built our first uh, mini game back then. I taught myself Objective-C completely on my own simply because I wanted to release an application for the iPhone that I had in my pocket. That was a huge dream at that time and it was so cool to build your own thing for this little device. Um, I still love it today even when I build an Ionic application and run it on my device. 
I'm always happy to see my code running right in my pocket, which is a very cool skill, I still think. 2012 was actually an interesting year because I got my first little job in which the company used a web shop which used Magento. I don't know if that's still a thing. I think it's, was it free? Maybe it was free, it was using PHP. I wasn't really a PHP uh, expert at that time. They also had some Objective-C tests, which I liked actually a lot more. This was the first time I got into like more business side of things and maybe, maybe I committed sometimes things that I shouldn't have committed on Friday afternoon. So um, I'm really sorry for that if anyone from that company is still watching. And then 2013 was interesting. My last year at the university, I was working on my bachelor thesis. And at that time I started with cross-platform development. I started started using Titanium back then, maybe that's still a thing, uh, and got into JavaScript for the very first time. Titanium at that time was pretty horrible, uh, although my thesis was kind of okay, I would say. After I finished it, I also started at my first company, uh, which also used Java, so once again, I got back into Java enterprise development. And then the following years were quite technology intensive, I would say, uh, because we worked always on a lot of different projects at the same time, I got uh, exposed to a lot of different technology. In 2014, I also got into Ruby scripts, I got into shell scripts, uh, I got a bit into continuous integration environments with the Jenkins. I got a lot more into Git and everything related to Git. Picking up your first job always means like learning a bunch of things in the first years. Because I had an awesome colleague then which taught me a lot of things uh, also about Objective-C, uh, writing shell scripts. I picked up all of these different technologies or at least the foundation. I wouldn't say I know a lot about Ruby. Uh, or Python, but back then I was actually able to build a little server with Python. Uh, we created scripts to resign our applications using the Jenkins flow, so that was really a very cool time back then. And then in 2015, five years ago, things actually finally evolved into the direction I'm currently in. So first I picked up Swift and I really enjoyed Swift back then, so I thought I would always uh, stay an iOS developer. But in that year, I also picked up AngularJS and Ionic 1. If you know what I'm doing, you know that I still stick to these technologies. Well, not Ionic 1, but Ionic in general. 2015 was actually a huge milestone in my life in terms of the technologies. I also got into Cordova, um, and actually I didn't get into AngularJS too much. Uh, in the beginning, I thought everything was Ionic and I didn't really understand what Angular was. I learned this a bit later actually. At that time I also started my blog, so in 2016 I also got into a lot of new technologies based on my own interest. I started to get into Node.js to develop my own servers. Uh, I used Firebase for the first time and had a conference talk on that topic as well. So my focus shifted a bit to, well, general web technologies, everything around JavaScript. I think Ionic 2 was released in that year and soon later, I think in 2017, Ionic 3 was released. And in 2017, we also worked on a little startup project, which got me um, work on new topics once again. So these new topics included like socket connections, deploying a server to Heroku, using AWS, and all these kind of more uh, perhaps operational things to run your own code uh, as a server, as an application, as a website, anything. And I think in 2017, I actually became self-employed. I can't remember, I think it's now three years. After that, it slowed a bit down because I had a lot of other things. If you become self-employed, you also need to focus on the marketing side, on the uh, general business aspects, and you can't uh, spend all your time learning new things. In 2018, for example, the only thing I really picked up was Angular and creating just websites with Angular. Up until that point, I actually haven't used a lot of Angular besides Ionic. So in the previous two years, I just used Ionic and understood the general uh, stuff about Angular, but I didn't really use it. So after 2018 and 2019, I actually got uh, into Nest.js, which is now my favorite framework for developing server applications. Uh, of course, Ionic 4 was released in 2019, so getting into the new Ionic versions was or still is a major part of what I do because I need to stay up to date. Uh, and now in 2020, 
Uh, I got finally a bit more into capacitor and other things around Ionic. I got started with Ionic 5. And besides that, uh, I don't really have any plans to get anything new right now. And through all these years, of course, I've used a bunch of different tools. Uh, I think I actually started with a Visual Studio for C++. I moved into uh, simple text editing tools. I used Dreamweaver for the web. Um, I used Xcode all the time for iOS development. I used uh, Sublime, Atom and finally Visual Studio Code for writing JavaScript, so I've used a bunch of editors uh, during all those years. And while I don't have any plans to learn any specific language in the future, uh, I'm still open for anything new. Just like I picked up Nest.js in the next year, I'm really excited to see what's coming in the future. Ionic and Capacitor is a great combination for the front end so far and I like Nest.js on the back end, but we will see what changes. There are a lot of different options now for uh, hosting static sites, which is an interest I definitely have when I got more time. So perhaps static sites is something I will try in 20... 21 maybe next year but besides that that's already like 15 years of a lot of coding alrighty then that's it for the coding timeline of my life actually it's longer than I expected I must admit I felt comfortable at every step so uh, if I go back to the year uh, 28 or uh, 2011 I felt completely comfortable using my Java and my SQL because I didn't really know what I didn't know back then. Today I actually know that I know basically nothing. There are so many topics out there that I have no idea about, but because I have a solid foundation about software development, algorithms, data structures, I feel confident to get into everything new, so when I try something new, when I get into Swift today or into Java, I know that I can look up things, I will understand them, and I can apply them easily based on the experience I've gathered over the years. Don't feel uncomfortable if you have just like maybe one or two years of experience, you shouldn't feel bad about that. Feel fine about the skills you already have and be sure that you will learn a lot of things, especially in great jobs with good colleagues. You will learn a bunch over the course of a year already. I would love to see your coding timeline below. Let me know the years. I'm pretty sure that there are some people who might have actually a lot longer list than I am. So if you're 50 or 60 years old watching this video, I'm really excited where you got started and which languages and topics you picked up over all those years. Take a minute to go through your history of life. It is really exciting to go back and check out what you did like 10, perhaps even 20 years ago and let me know. And with that good feeling, I hope you will have a great week of experience coding or just a regular great week if you're just getting started. And I will catch you next week, like always. So have a great week and happy coding, Simon. Simon.